Well, I'll just press record now and you can take it away. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to the Blow Apart Cog podcast. Yeah. You can put that, put that in the, yeah. the things. Right, we'll, we'll go again, shall we? Uh, try again. Yeah. We'll try again. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to the Blow Apart podcast with myself, Joe, and Joe. Hola, como estas? <laughs> Joe's been touching up his languages while he's been locked inside. Um, we're joined today with Nick Poppleton. Um, so Nick currently holds a EuroPro Tour card. Um, he won the Brabazon in 2018 and he's with Underpin Sports Management. Um, Nick, I know today you're going to chat to us a little bit about short game. This is quite exciting because I know that you've done some work with Pete Cowan um, and with Nick there as well. So obviously, is it Hubie? Yeah, Nick Hubie uh, at the Cowan Academy yeah. in Rotherham. Uh, and also, I've been very lucky to uh, go through a couple of national squads, Yorkshire squad, worked with Graham Walker, worked with Tommy Fleetwood on his short game, a couple of other top players. Uh, yeah, and obviously Pete being the, the man that knows knows everything. I mean, uh, he has helped Brooks short game massively. Uh, Gary Woodland sort of transformed his short game. I mean, Pete described him as a one out of ten when he first started working with him, and the guy was winning on PGA Tour, so I'm sure he wasn't that bad, but I mean, Pete, Pete can uh, do some really good stuff around the greens, and uh, I've been lucky enough to watch him first-hand play shots and play pitch shots, and sort of in real conditions, and he, is, he is, does practice what he preaches, definitely. Awesome. So, I mean, let's, um, let's have a chat a bit about your short game, obviously it's going to be strong. I remember when we used to play a lot, you know, it was particularly strong even at that point. Um, mm. For the viewers at home, we want to try and help them. Obviously, they're going to be amateur golfers um, with real sort of varied handicaps. What kind of short game advice could you offer them? Is there anything that you've been told that's really helped so, you and you might be able to pass over? The te- technically, I work sort of on the same, maintaining the same sort of things. I would try to, generally when my chipping technique's bad, I would get a little bit too far away from the ball. The shaft would be not as upright as I'd like it to be. It'd be sat down a little bit. So, so sort of generally, I'd be trying to get in a little bit closer to the ball for the standard chip. And if anything, the, the toe down, the, the heel a little bit off the ground and, and sort of down the grip a little bit as well. On the chipping on the, on the steel, I've watched some guys that really good chippers and it sort of looked really, really quick as well as it being sort of upright shaft. So I, generally, when, I, uh, when I've seen my chipping being poor and I've struggled with sort of sandy lies and into the grain lies, uh, it's been when I've been too far away from the ball and the shaft's been a little bit too flat. So technically, that's what sort of I'd look at if I found that I wasn't actually striking the ball as I'd like to. Uh, but th- that's not the whole uh, the whole thing with short games. Sometimes managing your the shots that you're picking, uh, which I picked some help up off Graham Walker. So I'd run through a process. So the first thing I'd look at is how is the ball lying? And there's three lies. Uh, average, below average, or or good lie. So I would evaluate which one it is because the different the different lies need different speeds, different shots you might want to play. The the bad lie is going to run out more. The 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 average lie is going to sort of run out average, and then the the good lie is going to run out less. So evaluating then what club you're going to hit, you need to figure out a landing area. So I look for the first available flat spot. So then I'd land it in that area with a club that would run up to the hole. So maybe it would be probably, if, if it's a seven iron with the perfect lie, it might be an eight iron with the average lie. And then the below average, it might be a nine iron. Because yeah. I know that it, they're going to need a bit more hit in the below average lie, a little bit more speed, a little bit more loft. And then, you know, ultimately we're trying to hold the shot. And I find that, that really zones me into concentrating on the line in which it's going to go into the hole. So it really concentrates you. Into, if you're trying to hole it, you're aiming at a really small target then, rather than just aiming to hit it inside eight foot. You know, oh, I'll just hit it inside this six foot radius or the dustbin lid. If you're trying to hole it, you, I think generally you're more engaged, you're more switched on to actually uh, hitting the ball close to the hole. Absolutely, really yeah. simplifies the shot. There's kind of an analogy that I use a lot when I'm sort of putting coaching with people that say, oh, you know, let's try and putt within a dustbin lid. I'm like, well, that's like dart players just aiming for the dartboard. Yeah, I think, uh, you know, Jordan Spieth, I said aim small, miss small. You know, the smaller the target you're aiming at, the, the, 
better chance you've got of actually hitting it on that target. And I think it just it engages you to switch on because if the task is harder, it requires you to engage more. If it was an easy task, you wouldn't be a switch on, would you? You know, something's come as natural, like driving a car. You just get in and put your keys in ignition, you do it. The first time you do it, it takes you a bit of time to get it right. So I think mm. sort of the, the harder the task is, the more you're going to be engaged to actually achieve something. Yeah, you know, I, I, I really like that. And I, and I really like the fact that so far on this episode, we haven't necessarily, you mentioned a couple of things where, where, where your chipping goes a little bit, Little yeah, bit dodgy that's, where that's, the hands get a bit low. Personally, my maintenance as well, Joe. Like that, as a good, as a player that plays a lot and, and and wants to play for a living, you've got to have something that's technically, you know, knowing yourself, knowing what you need to maintain. Yeah, I think sometimes with I, I personally, I don't need to revamp my short game. You know, sometimes it gets a little bit off the tracks, but I go see my coach. He puts me back on the tracks, and we we start again. We we continue going forwards. Yeah. Some guys get so far away from the tracks, they need to go and see a PGA pro or see somebody, get a bit of help, get back on the track. But then to stay on the tracks as long as you can, I think you do need to to evaluate how you play the shots as well, opposed yeah. from it just being technical. Oh, 100%. And I think that's not always, but quite often, you see the best, the best short game players are the people that don't get too technical and they're the guys mm. that are competing. Well, actually, in the main episode... Um, which yeah. will be coming out after this. We briefly mentioned about Tom Sloman, who you've played a lot of golf with. Yeah, definitely. Took everyone to the cleaners with one club, a lob wedge, even if it might not be the right club. Yeah. He's absolute mustard with that one club. I hear so, the guys on the do it as well. Like uh, I hear Shane Lowry and uh, Podrick Harrington sort of seek each other out on the chipping green and they'll play for sort of 50 euros. Yeah. Uh, that's why they're good. That's why those guys are phenomenal because they'll go put the money on the table you know, an event and they'll seek each other out and they'll compete short game wise to make sure that they're sharp. Yeah. Opposed from it being stood in a bunker, trying to grab your golf coach, being like, oh, I need you to, where's my technique? It's no, what's it do under the gun? If you need some technical help, that's another thing that you'll go and find. But actually, if you're hitting really good short game shots and it's just not repetitive, you need to do the action more. You need to be yeah. more, put more pressure on yourself. So yeah. then when you do perform, it doesn't, come unstuck and I guess it's totally subjective but what would you say as a percentage or a ratio does color what percentage of time would you spend on te- actually let, let's target it at you what what would you what sort of time would you spend on technical versus well more practical practice yeah more sort of skills games and chill yeah. challenge uh really it used to be very very uh technically orientated most of my sessions uh but I'd probably say I'm trying to move it more towards, if I'm practicing 50-50, more towards, you know, a bit of maintenance, more of a routine of I'll do a little bit of technical work and then I'll go and put it to test to see if it works. So, like, if I was put, when I warm up putting-wise, I, the first thing I do is I get on the green and use the start gate to make sure that the bottom line is I'm starting the ball on line. And the next thing is I'll suss my pace out. So I'll go and put to every corner of the green. And the next thing it will be hitting some shots and reading the putts to make sure I'm reading them good. So I broke down my skills into individual sessions within one putting session. I think that's quite good and would help a lot of players to know that even with the chipping, there's more than one decision that you need to make. And so breaking those skills down will help you understand what skill it is that you need to improve Mm. opposed from being, well, it's just chipping. Well, it's not just chipping, it's, it's decision-making, it's reading lies, it's, it's also technique, and then it's also doing it. So there's four different sessions there. But yeah, I went to work on my chipping, but what does that, what's that actually, what, have you, what does that mean? What have you actually been to work on within your chipping? Yeah. So let's imagine now then, let's imagine I am, uh, say, an 18 handicap golfer. I play, you know, once a week or twice a week at my golf club. A short game at the moment is like everyone's at that sort of stage. You know, it's obviously it's yeah. going to be a little bit inconsistent. Um, it, I, it's something, however, that, you know, let's say something now I've loads of time, you know, like guys that are my golf equipment at the selling companies or, or whatever. Um, yeah. I've now suddenly got a load of time to invest into my short game. How do I start? What do I practice? Talk me kind of through that. The first thing I think most people need to, in that situation, they do need a bit of a technical sort of, 
grab the ball by the horns because that's what they're searching for. They're always, they always think that, that, that it lies within, you know, if I, if I get my technique better, I'll be a better player. And I think if you give them something to occupy themselves technique wise, they definitely, they will improve because they're just doing it and repeating the action. So definitely with sitting the shaft up a little bit steeper, it's working a little bit more on a pendulum. It makes it so much easier to feel the club releasing and not be driving the handle at it. And most of the short game that you see is that the handle takes over, the head gets left behind, and you get a dig or a, or they yeah. then chuck it, chuck the head in, and it becomes a little bit of a scoop. And so the first thing generally that I would go to is making sure that the techniques they can actually repeat something, and then mm-hmm. talking them through what they you know what they're trying to achieve, letting them hit some shots that are you know what don't they like? I know some players don't like to throw it up in the air. So then that, that can be something that you can, you can talk about. You can sort of work your way around. I mean, I do a lot of chipping uh, left hand below right. It really helps me to throw the club head in a little bit earlier and use the, the back edge of the bounce. And actually partway through the last season, I actually played a couple of tournament rounds, chipping cack handed. Uh, I played one, the first two tournaments because I'd got so much better at chipping pack handed than I was the right way around (laughs) that the only thing that was stopping me from actually doing it in tournament was my ego. And I sat to talk to Nick about it and talked to Pete and had a chat with Pete about it. And he's like, well, do it then. The only thing that stopped, if you're telling me that you chip it closer pack handed, why would you not chip pack handed? Because it simply, the mechanics were better that I would actually deliver the club in a better position. So, I practiced it, it was worth doing. Mm. So sometimes you've got to find a mechanical way that will help the player. When they've got the confidence, then they can, they can learn to hit the shots and learn to pick the right shots for them. That's so I've run through that with the player and you know, get them in a technical good place so then they can pick shots. Because as long as it repeats in some fashion, they can build a structure, whether it's pitching it five feet on the green, whether it's pitching it two foot on the green. They can build something that they can then you know, be more consistent. Absolutely. Brilliant. No, that's a really good bit of advice. Mm. Yeah, I like that. Um, anything else we've got on short game? We're gonna we're gonna title this one, I reckon. Short game advice from top professional golfer Nick Poppleton. What do we reckon on that title? Oh, um, just just while we're um, just while we're recording, Nick. Um, the viewers can um, can listen to this. Send me over yeah. your best action shot if you don't mind, and we'll stick you in the thumbnail. Right. Okay. Yeah. 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 No That's worries. Right. We'll get that. Yeah. Um, for an action so shot. Now. One last. So you've got kind of one last little tip you can give somebody. It's only it's got to be like one sentence sort of thing, just to wrap this up. If somebody comes to you and says, "I want help with my short game," what would be the one thing that you would tell them? Is there anything you can tell that's absolute nectar? Uh. Next, uh, down the shaft, uh, down down the grip, and and genuinely steepen the shaft to make it more of a pendulum. Cool. So much easier. Foolproof. Foolproof. Yeah. It literally is just that that you know why make it harder? Make it as easy as you can. Absolutely, love it. Absolutely. Right, so that is this video pretty much wrapped up. I know we're gonna do another video with Nick pretty much straight after this. I think we'll just leave it recording, Joe. Yeah. Um, but we're gonna get some driving advice then, basically on how to improve your driving when we get out on the golf course and and tips that have helped nick um obviously make it to where he is today so um thanks so much for watching this episode um thank you nick again for for coming on and, and giving us your time thanks Joe, for having me. thank you as always and we'll see you very soon for the next one like and subscribe please